was a decision that's actually taken a very long time to make and I don't know if I've actually completely made it. Um, up until the beginning of this year I was still a registered teacher um, and I gave up my registration this year when I found I could for at least this year write full time uh, which I'm delighted to be doing and while I love teaching I love writing more and to be able to spend my days writing is literally a dream come true. Uh, no, not at all, and um, I don't think I actually have made the move from writing younger books. I still write picture books um, a lot, and I really love that as a, a medium of getting a story across. Uh, it just happens that The Bone Sparrow didn't fit a picture book um, format, and uh, yeah, I think I mentioned before that I don't actually set out to write stories for a particular audiences just as they, as they emerge. So uh, writing picture books is definitely something I'd like to continue doing as well. Well, up until last year, I had uh, kids at home, not all of them were at school, so I would write during sort of nap time and when the kids had gone to sleep at night. Um, but now my kids are at school, I've actually, a friend of mine has uh, given me a studio space, a shared space near the, nearby the school, so um, I drop the kids off, I go for a swim and I ride to the studio and, and work from there. It's lovely. Yeah, I have um, notebooks full of ideas for stories. Um, lots of them are from newspaper articles or sort of snippets I've heard on, on radio or magazines. Um, I've actually become quite obsessed with the This American Life podcast and that's full of great story ideas, just small little bits of information that are fantastic. No, they're not. I mean, occasionally I put in um, sort of personal details to sort of give a nod to people who know me, but they're very little things like, you know, favourite numbers or um, books, names, that kind of thing. Um, I do have an ancestor who lived in Bulgaria who used to grow penicillin on the inside of a cave, and so I put that into the bone sparrow because I thought that was pretty amazing, but other than that, no. It changes depending on my mood and the way I'm feeling and what I'm reading at the moment. Um, but Roddy Doyle is always a firm favourite, uh, as is Louis de Beignier, um, David Armand. I've only recently discovered his work, but I really love his sort of simple style of writing. Um, Isabel Allende, uh, she was one of the first sort of adult authors I read and introduced me to magical realism, and that comes up a lot in my books as well. Um, uh, John Irving is another one. I like his work a lot. Catherine Rundell, um, her two books she's written for kids are just beautiful. Um, and uh, Kate Redfall is another, another firm favourite. If I had to choose a favourite, I'd choose A Thousand and One Nights. Um, they've got some beautiful stories in there and my, my kids and myself chase down the various translations and compilations to find tales that we haven't come across before. I think I'll have to be boring and say To Kill a Mockingbird because I really I do love it and our first dog was called Scout. Um, the other one would be Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Um, I love his writing and again the, the use of magical realism is just beautiful. I've chosen number one the Tolland Man who was a, a man in the 4th century BC um, whose body was discovered in a peat bog in Denmark and uh, he had a rope around his neck. They thought it was sacrificial, not um, sort of a punitive hanging. Not sure how they worked that out. But his body was so well preserved in the bog that they, when they, he was discovered, they actually thought it was a recent murder victim rather than this man who's thousands and thousands of years old. So he's the first one. Um, the second one is Dr. Doolittle, who I know technically isn't a person, but if I'm inviting a bog man, I'm gonna go with Dr. Doolittle. And the third one, is a girl called Navy Barker, Navy Baker, Navy Baker, and she's a teenage girl, painfully shy. She lives in America, uncoordinated. You know, she has a lot of problems socially, but she had an idea that she wanted to be the mascot for the school American football team, and so she somehow got hold of this tiger suit, and without being allowed to, she went on to the field in her tiger suit. And half time at her brother's football match 
and the suit completely transformed her and she was she's an absolute sensation she she can you know do all this stuff that she couldn't do without the suit on so she's doing cartwheels and dances and she's larger than life and um, yeah her story I, I love her story so yeah she's the third one <laughs>